Now that we've seen how UTC students explore real-world solutions through applied research projects, let's take a look at what the spirit of innovation and achievement can spur in our graduates. An outstanding example of how a UTC education can lead an alumnus to literally change the face of Chattanooga manufacturing is 1982 business graduate Don Leppard and his company, Global Green Lighting. For years, street lights have basically done one job in one way, illuminate the surrounding area by turning on and off. But when Leopard looked at a regular street light, he saw an opportunity to revolutionize the world of outdoor lighting and buck the national trend of outsourcing American jobs to overseas workers at the same time. Leopard credits both his UTC business education and his time on the gridiron as a football mock for the tenacity and drive needed to succeed in the business world. When you play football, you've got four downs to make 10 yards. And if you don't get it the first time, you go back to the huddle, you call another play, and you go back out there and you do it again. And you try to reach that 10 yards, and then you try to score a touchdown, and then you try to win the game. And so I always look at, at our business decisions as a game, uh, as a play that we're calling in the game. And if we run it and it doesn't work, we go back, we retool it, and we do it again. After graduating from UTC, Leopard provided electronics for the appliance industry. But when the 2008 economic downturn lowered demand for new appliances, Leopard was forced to lay off workers in his Chattanooga plant. He never forgot the anguish of telling his employees that they no longer had jobs, and Leopard pledged to somehow bring the jobs back. The recession almost put him out of business until he saw the light. I was actually reading the stimulus package at 2 o'clock in the morning and I saw $3.2 billion in energy conservation and retrofit. And I realized at that point that that was something that we could get involved with to basically retool our company and go after some of that stimulus funding. And we've been chasing it ever since. Leopard proposed replacing the standard sodium pressured bulbs and street lights with superior LED lights that not only reduce energy consumption while producing brighter, more natural looking lighting, but also reduce greenhouse gas emissions and light pollution. Global Green Lighting was born. Leopard recognized that customers would depend on the financial savings from energy use reduction to fund the new lighting systems. But skeptical city managers wanted more evidence, so he had to find a way to prove his energy reduction claims. We developed the LED lighting, and we've got a great product, and we've used our background to develop the thermal management for the lights, but it wasn't until uh, we were out promoting the product and we made a comment that we can save 50% energy reduction. And they said, how, how do you prove that? And it was, it was a really good question. And so the first thing that started traveling through our minds was, is how do we prove it? You're going to have to go back and get 12 months worth of energy bills and compare it to the next 12 months before you can actually prove it. So that's when we decided that we wanted to put a meter inside the light so that we can measure the uh, technology. The new system monitors light use and maintenance 24-7 and allows lighting levels to be raised or lowered based on specific needs such as crowd control. The fixtures can even flash to signal emergencies. Global Green Lighting signed a contract with the City of Chattanooga to replace the city's 26,500 streetlights. With an estimated annual savings of $2.7 million in maintenance and energy use, the system is projected to pay for itself in seven years. And with all the technical and product success Global Green Lighting is experiencing, Leopard is most proud of bringing jobs back to Chattanooga. And we would go over to trade shows and we would actually see our product in other trade show booths. And what we were finding out was is that we were losing our technology from the tool and die shops that we were paying to build our product. They were selling those designs to other companies. And so that's when I made the decision that no longer do I need to send these jobs to China. I want to bring them back to the United States. We decided that if we can do it in China, we can do it here in the States. Plans call for global green lighting to move 250 jobs to Chattanooga from China by the end of 2013. As additional contracts are signed, Leopard says more jobs could be created in Chattanooga and other cities. Leopard appreciates the role UTC has played in his success, and he is not only committed to creating jobs, but also in working with UTC to provide educational opportunities for students. We're going to be bringing students here to do co-oping, put them right on the production line so they can see it from an, a, an assembly standpoint. We're going to put them in the design center so that we can design product and see how all that comes about. Um, but the one thing that I hope that I can do with these students when they come here is, is to teach them that little bit of that entrepreneurial spirit where you, you don't have to do exactly what you were taught to do. Make it different. 
Leopard is continuing his high-tech business innovation by taking advantage of Chattanooga's gig network. Global Green Lighting's Urban Connection device will provide a separate power source and network connection for other devices. Cameras, air quality monitors, even next generation cell phone technology could be housed on the lights. If we can take the gig off of every pole that's already out there and put it into that light, we've created a host for all the other devices that you want to put out there. And so our goal now is just to actually put a light up that's going to host other devices. And we can charge rent for those devices and actually pay for the cost of those lights without having to charge it to the taxpayers to buy the equipment and to maintain it. And we're going to let the private sector actually develop that for us.